I'm going to show you the number one problem students have when they come to me as the watercolor coach and how to fix it. Let's get started. Well, buckle up a little bit because I'm going to talk us through this in real time, which I don't usually do. Usually I speed my videos up a lot, but I want to really show the mixing that happens and how that is a valuable tool. But here's the beginning painting. It's of a pet from years ago. I, I did a lot of pet portraits. I haven't done them in a long time. And it the main problem that this picture has and that most pictures have that people bring to me is it doesn't have enough of a value range. This probably has a value range from about one, meaning white, probably to about, mm, I'm gonna think maybe five or six, but I'm gonna make that value range wider. So the first thing that I do is I put some quinacrinone uh, gold on the paper and a tiny, tiny bit of ultramarine blue. So what I'm doing on the side is I'm taking quinacrinone gold and I'm mixing a tiny bit of that blue in to tip the color enough that it's dark. It's darker than what I already have on there. And I'm going to apply that. Now, the reason it's important, that tiny, tiny bit, is I want to be able to tip color. I don't want to change. Well, I do. I change color, but what I'm doing is I'm changing value. I like that quinacrinum gold, but it's not dark enough. Now what I've done is add a little bit more ultra, ultramarine blue to it. So it looks black, but it's not. It's mixed from uh, quinacrinum gold and a little bit of ultramarine blue. And I'm putting that anywhere that I think is probably almost black in the photograph. But like I said, I don't have a photograph to go from. So already I've increased the value range because I didn't have anything as dark as that in the painting, but I don't use black. All right, here we go. Cronacronum gold again. Oh no, that's, that's a burnt sienna. And I'm going to add, let's see what I'm going to add something to it to tip it. Let's see. So I'm figuring that out. And I think what I figured out was I didn't really want to go darker. I already have the dark that I want. Oh, I didn't show it. I'll show it in a second. I know that I do. Oh, I tip this a little bit by adding a little bit of alizarin red to it. So I'm going around the color wheel in this case instead of across the color wheel. So for the first color that I tipped. I went across the color wheel. I basically mixed an orange with a blue. Now I'm going around the color wheel, mi mixing an orange. I'm calling burnt sienna here an orange and adding a little bit of alizarin crimson to it. Why alizarin crimson? Because alizarin crimson is already a dark red. And I know I just want to find a brown that will be a little bit lighter than the brown that I just put in but I don't want to sacrifice brightness. If I go across the color wheel, I'll sacrifice brightness. And at the end of the day, this painting will, if I continue to go across the color wheel, it will dull down and dull down and dull down. I don't want to do that. So let's see what decision gets made next. All right, I take ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and a burnt sienna. I've already used these three colors in the painting already. I'm going to use it again. And what I do this time is I'm working at with it as a triad. So I don't mix those three colors together. I could, and I'll come up with, see that kind of darker brownish purple. But what I try to do instead, and it's hard to see here, is I'm laying in those individual colors where I can so that they will mass together. That's why I talk about mass for value, mix for color. I'm gonna mass those colors together. In other words, place them near each other, and the eye will make them appear as if it, that, as if it is that mixed color. But if you look really closely, you'd be able to see the individual colors. And again, the reason for this is brightness. Uh, yeah, that I want to maintain brightness. I don't want to go darker and just make everything blacker, blacker, grayer, grayer, grayer. I want to have some brightness. So I'm, that's what I do in order to achieve that. Uh, and that is one of my favorite triads for darks, would be ultramarine blue, um, alizarin crimson, and that burnt sienna. So... Once again, remember the goal was to make the painting have a stronger value range. It already has a stronger value range, but in the back of my mind, I'm also thinking, yeah, but I don't want to sacrifice brightness. I don't want to end up just with a darker painting. You know, if I was to use a gray or just a black, I would end up, it would end up being darker overall, but it would almost look as if there was a gray film or like cellophane over it, like in front of the painting, and I don't want to do that. 
I want to maintain, like I said, I want to maintain brightness. So let's see what happens now. So we're back to, ah, this is quinacridone gold completely on its own. I don't mix it at all. Now, you know, the brighter, the brightest it's going to be is when quinacridone gold comes out of the tube. So if I make, as soon as you mix any color with another color, it's going to dull it down a little bit. And I don't want to do that. And I think this is a pleasing color, and I think it complements the collie. The other thing that it does is it's a yellow, and yellow is the opposite of violet. And you can see there's a lot of violet going on in the painting already, especially in the, um, the uh, shadow I established under the collie anyway. So I'm thinking about mixing all the time, but I'm also thinking about complementary colors, and I'm also thinking about what would happen if I, when I mix. Am I going to sacrifice and end up with dullness? What I did here was, which you can't see, I did a little off screen, was Cronacronum Gold. So it's the same as what I've made on the uh, porch, but I added uh, Naples Yellow to it. So it's just tipped, tipped a tiny bit lighter than what the porch is. And it, those little, little tiny differences make a difference. Otherwise, this collie will start to fade completely into the background. And he's the main star, so I want to make sure that he stands out. Now, this is a very old piece of paper because I uh, might have done this, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. And to my surprise, I found that uh, paper doesn't really accept water after 10 years. <laughs> it was very resistive, uh, but we worked. We worked through that. So now I've got some more decisions to make. I kind of look at it and I think, okay, I've, I probably have achieved that value shift that I wanted, but um, I feel like I can do better. So I'm taking a, ah, I see what I'm doing. This is my go-to neutral, which is um, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and a little bit of Naples yellow. Now, you see there, I mix them all together. You see what they look like when they're a neutral. But if I apply them somewhat separately, and it's really hard to see there, it doesn't look like they're separating out, but they are. They will maintain a brightness and still give me the illusion of something that is a light gray. But What's important is that it's not dull, and because I've used these colors already in the painting, they'll go with the painting with the colors I already have in the painting. It would be really unfortunate to introduce a new color that I'd never used before at this point. Better to keep a limited palette and mix from what, what I already have. So in other words, if I was to bring in, oh, let's see, like a Hansa yellow right now, or if I was to bring in a cerulean blue, it would it would work but it would look a little off because that, those aren't the building blocks that I've used in the painting so far. So already the Kali is kind of looking more present than he was when we began this process. And I just wanted to explain all the, those subtle differences in tipping color and how to tip it so that um, you get just that little tweak of a difference that makes a difference. <clears throat> okay, time for some green. I wanna enhance the green in the background. So I'm using quinacridone gold because remember I started with that and I've been using it. <coughs> I'm sorry, ultramarine blue, and then I put a little tiny dab there. You can see a lizard, a lizard in crimson. That's to demonstrate that I'm going to have just the tiniest bit of alizarin and crimson in this green mix. So again, it creates a chord that will go with the painting that I've established so far. It's also going to be um, not not as bright. It should dull down a little bit. And now I do want to dull down a little bit because it's going to be the background. I don't think I want the background to be brighter than my star. And my star is the Kali. And now I'm going to lay in some, that's Kali Quinacrinum Sienna with a little bit of that ultramarine blue in it. And like I said, just the tiniest, tiniest dab of alizarin and crimson so that things stay cohesive and that it's a little bit dulled down. So there are reasons why you want a dull color down, you know, especially if you, you know, you have something in the distance or something you don't want to draw as much attention to. And then there are other times when you want to uh, not dull color down. So when I mix across the color wheel, it's going to dull color down. Or if I mix three primaries together, it's going to dull color down. But if I mix around the color wheel, I'll probably maintain brightness. And most of the time when I'm painting, I'm trying to maintain brightness. These are just final adjustments to something that just didn't quite meet the mark.
which, as I said, is often the case with people that come here for watercolor coaching skills. They just haven't gotten that value range that they need yet. It's close because it matches the photograph, but being a matchy-matchy painter only takes you so far. You really need to get those value um, values established, which I had done. It's not that I didn't do it, but I could have done better. And now I've got a stronger range of values. So I'm going to go across to the value finder now, which is going to show what the painting would look like if it was all uh, black, white, and gray. And there are all my color dabs, which coincide with the painting. So here comes the final painting, and you can look back at where we came from, and it's a better painting. You know, it's just more present, has better color. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, match for value, mix for color, and make your value range as wide as you can. See you next time. Bye-bye.